Hi, and welcome to today's SAP Business One Academy helpful how-to session. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to use the SAP Business One demo server farm and how to log on to SAP Business One for the very first time after you've received your username and password. So in order to do that, first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to have registered for the demo server farm. And you can do that by sending me the application form. Now, assuming that you've done that and you've received the email back with your user logon credentials, what you'll need to do is you will need to go and start up a Internet Explorer session. So now, at the moment, you need to use Internet Explorer. I haven't yet switched on the cross-browser, cross-platform tools, and I haven't switched on the Citrix tools yet. So right now, you'll need Internet Explorer because all of the remote access is being handled through, uh, through the remote desktop protocol, which connects to remote desktop services on the back-end server farm. So open up your Internet Explorer and then in the email you'll see I've given you uh, a URL of www.sapbusinessonedemos.com slash rdweb and you'll see I've visited the site a few times so it's already here in my history. So I'm going to select that and then what you'll get is the SAP Business One Demo Server Farm logon screen. So if you look in the email that you've received, you'll see that the username that you've been given begins with the domain name of Demo Farm. All right, so that's always going to be the first thing you're going to put in. And then you'll put a backslash and then you'll put your username. And again, this is all included in the email. So I've created a user right now and it's called Demo User. And I've also created a password. So you'll use your username and your password from the email. And I'm just going to use my password here. Now, in this security block, you can specify that it's either a public or a private computer. It's up to you. That just controls how much information gets stored on the local machine. And then you'll choose Sign In. And the next screen you'll see uh, will be something like this, the demo server farm with all these different icons on it. Now, a couple of things to note. If you've never used remote desktop services before, you may get prompted by Internet Explorer to activate the remote desktop ActiveX control. That's perfectly safe. It's a Microsoft ActiveX control. You should go ahead and say that's okay if you get that prompt. Now, the other thing that you will might notice, depending on the profile that you've got set up for you, you might not necessarily see all these icons. I have a couple of different profiles. I have a student profile. I have an SAP channel partner profile, an SAP employee profile, and, and uh, an SAP uh, software solution partner profile. And depending on which one of those profiles you'll have, you'll see different icons. So uh, right now, I'm logged on as an SAP employee. But the icons that you'll see on all of the sessions are these main ones along here. These are the main ones that we're uh, interested in at the moment, the SAP Business One icons. So what are each one of these? Well, you've got SAP Business One 8.82 patch level 10, just with the standard cockpits, no connection at all to HANA. Then you have 8.82 with the Business One analytics powered by SAP HANA. You have SAP Business One 9.0 with the 64-bit client. And then, of course, you have the full SAP Business One for HANA, which is running transactions and analytics on HANA. A couple of versions of the HANA Studio and, of course, the SAP Visual Intelligence solution, which I uh, recorded a video on just the other day. And you can find that on the SAP Business One Academy. So the one that I'm going to show you with is uh, the latest one, which is SAP Business One version 9. So what do you do here? You simply click on the icon of the application you want. You'll see that it gives you this little message letting you know that a remote application is about to be run. Now, nothing gets installed on your local PC. All right. Um, it's all being secured. And if you want to, you can check the certificate to, to validate that security. But then you'll choose connect. And then the next thing is you'll get this additional security message. Because again, I want to make sure that uh, everything that, that is being deployed is secure as possible. So it's going to ask you again for your username. You put in the domain name here, and then you put the backslash. If you put the wrong direction slash, you won't get the name of the domain demo farm down here. So you'll, it's not going to work. Uh, you'll know you've made a mistake. But in this case, I've done the right thing. 
so I'll put in my username and then I'll put in my password again and then when I've got that right I click on OK so what's now happening is the system is opening up a secure HTTPS channel between your machine and the demo server farm now you'll get this logon message which is just reminding you that this is provided by me uh, Richard Duffy it's not associated with SAP uh, and also it's reminding you that it is for demo purposes only all right so in order to proceed you just click here that you understand and agree to the terms of the policy and then you click on OK and what you'll see happen now is that connection will continue to uh, continue to be made now what you're looking for is this little show details um, area here that's going to go black in a second and when that does and you get this little pop-up message down the bottom you know you've got a secured connection between your machine and the demo server farm and in a couple of seconds, what you're going to see for the, on the very first time that you log on is you're going to see it's going to build your desktop profile. So that's why you're getting that little personalized settings message which pops up there. And then the next thing you're going to see is your full SAP Business One application running on your machine as if uh, it was running locally. But of course it's not. It's running over the internet and nothing's been installed on your local machine. So what do you need to do? You need to put in your username. All right, so this is the same username that's been provided for you in your welcome email. So I'll put that in there and then I'll click on OK. Then you also want to go in here and you want to select the uh, company database or the localization that, uh, that's been confirmed for you in your sign up email. So in this case, I'll just double click on the localization column and I'll scroll down here and I want to use the US localization so that's the one I want so I'll say OK now the very first time you log on you're gonna get this message okay because I didn't set a password for you for SAP Business One so you leave the old password blank and then you just put in here the new password that you want to use alright now I've got a password policy in place here so it needs to be at least eight characters it needs to have a non uh, it needs to have a alphanumeric character and it leads, needs to have a non alphanumeric character in here so for example let's for the sake of the exercise I'll make it capital D 3 M O dot U S 3 R okay so then repeat that D 3 M O dot U S 3 R and then you'll say update and that will now be your password that you use when you're logging into Business One. Not when you're logging into the main server, but only when you're logging into Business One. Now you'll see that operation was completed successfully. Business One's giving you these uh, visual prompts. All right. It's setting up your access for the very first time. Now, um, you might be wondering, okay, where's the cockpit? Well, the cockpit switched on, but you have to activate it for your profile. So I'm going to agree to send data in for the SAP Business One Improvement Program. This is, you know, we're collecting information if the system crashes or anything like that. Um, then I've got my little welcome screen. You can select to let that keep showing up each time you log on, or you can get rid of it. I'm just going to close that down. And then you just go up here to Tools. And then you go to cockpit and you say enable my cockpit. All right, and it's telling you this setting is going to take effect the next time you log on to business one. So let's go ahead and we'll do that now. So I'm going to exit out. Give that a couple of seconds and let's come straight back in again. Going to connect. All right, this time I'm going to use my new password that I put in. And the system has auto now automatically knows which company you're going to go into. Okay, so I'll put that in and I'll say OK. Give it a couple of seconds and this time the cockpit's going to load up for you and you're going to get the different user interface with the cockpit activated. All right, now you get these defaults here in the browser with the browser widgets which point to SAP websites. What I tend to do is just to make that first, uh, that first logon as quick as possible, 
I have a tendency to go in here and I just get rid of these. All right, so your home screen, uh, I kind of leave that blank. But again, that's up to you. Just click on the settings icon and I'll say close and same thing here, settings and close. All right, so now I'm ready, uh, but I do have my standard dashboards here. So you can see I can go in here to sales and it paints the standard sales dashboard. All right, but the standard sales dashboard does not have uh, any content selected. So to populate that with some content, you can either click down here on settings or you can click up here on the tool icon. I'm gonna go down here to settings and then I'm gonna choose here I wanna see sales analysis. I'll say okay. Click on the yes for the certificate validation. And there you have it. Your dashboard is now uh, set up. You've got your sales analysis dashboard, you've got some data in there and you're now ready to go and you can start working with the system. Just a quick reminder, when you are finished your session, please go up here and you click on the little close button and then that will exit you out gracefully. And then make sure you close down your web browser and that will shut down your session completely. So that's it. I hope that was helpful for you and I look forward to hearing your feedback on the system. Thanks.